to Coffee for Closers. My name's Alex Wellings, and I'm here again in studio with Mr. Rick Kohlmeyer. Good to be here. And we are joined back into the sales process. We're jumping right back in with both both feet and uh, going to be talking about the second appointment today, which is uh, a crucial appointment, Rick. It's obviously where you're going to lay the foundation for what you can do as a financial planner. Uh, you're going to create doubt in their current situation. You're going to uh, really set yourself up for presenting your final plan to them in appointment three, which is essentially a, uh, I mean, your close is, is almost this appointment. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And the second or the third appointment is more or less just showing them exactly what they've agreed to do at mm-hmm. this point. And unless they uh, vehemently disagree with what you're suggesting in appointment three, uh, it's going to tee you up. Whatever, whatever answer you get at the end of appointment two is going to set you up for a, a pretty guaranteed close if yeah. there is such a thing. So uh, it should be mentioned, though, as we were talking before just moments ago when we went on was, uh, you know, that there's a pre-appointment prep mm-hmm. that goes for this. Yeah, you should be prepping for each one of your meetings. Yes, of even, course. Even if it's 10 minutes, five minutes, you should be prepping, knowing what you're going into. Yeah, you got to refresh that brain of yours on exactly what happened in the last appointment. You got to, uh, again, you got to establish uh, uh, what their, do a quick needs assessment in, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and see what their needs are. Uh, knowing what you know now, which is somewhat different from what you mm. knew going into your first appointment, obviously. And then finally have a game plan, put it the game plan together. And we did obviously an appointment or in the first session of this sales training, this federal sales training, uh, we, we went through the, how to do an, a, a pre-appointment prep, uh, properly. Mm-hmm. Right. So second appointment starts this way. Right. Uh, second appointment, you are as an advisor going to want to sit down and you are going to want to start to build back the rapport. Yep. Right. And so, Rick, you've seen this a lot with the advisors you've been dealing with in the Fed space. Uh, they're building the rapport for what reason? Why are they building back the rapport? Like, how do they do it? Are they just joshing around? Are they recapping? I mean, go in depth a little bit. Yeah. So I think that's a, a huge thing. Uh, in the sales industry, that's always a really fun part. I know it's something I struggled with just getting into the sales industry of like when people are like, oh, you got to create rapport with somebody. And you're like, yeah, what does that mean? Like, mm-hmm. are you just getting on the phone with them and joking around? And then like, you know, if you just do that, nobody's going to take you seriously. You don't really have like a business rapport and learning the difference there um, took me a little bit to get. And I think that's a huge part of the sales process. And so, no, you're not just getting on the phone with them and talking about the game last night. You know, you're, you're talking about moving things forward. So really kind of going back and redressing the initial question that they had, you mm-hmm. know, why they came into the office, some of the big things that you covered in the meeting uh, and doing it kind of in a, a lighthearted manner or uh, just a way to get them back in and create that familiarity again, because they've left. A lot of things have gone on in their past life for the week, two weeks that you haven't met. And so you got to get back into that mode of like, oh, this is a guy that we already dove into this with. You got to bring those ties back together and get it like to the point where you never left that first meeting. Right. 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 I mean, I've seen when I've taken a look at the advisors at the top of the pile in mm-hmm. the Fed space, they seem to go into the second appointment, uh, building back the rapport by what they had learned about the prospect in mm-hmm. the first appointment. So this cl- this potential client had maybe divulged some information about their family or their kids mm-hmm. or whatever. And so as they're recapping what happened in the first appointment, mm-hmm. they're also uh, kind of making funny anecdotes to their life or something like that, just mm-hmm. trying to loosen the vibe a little bit because at this point they, you know, depending on how much time has gone on, they've somewhat forgotten about the the nuanced pains that you mm-hmm. exposed in the first appointment, which if you remember the first appointment, we we basically did a general benefits overview and then we basically convinced them that a benefit analysis was the best thing that that most federal employees will do before going in. And there's no real place you can get that other than with advisors like myself Mm -hmm. or yourself, whoever the advisor is out there. Um, They can't get that anywhere else. So you've convinced them that this benefit analysis is the key. And so in that rapport building, uh, you're trying to to get them loosened up a little bit because they may come back a little cross armed again. Mm Right. And not wanting to share stuff or, or maybe they're open arms. If you're really great at what you do, maybe maybe they just are jazzed up exactly uh, the way you left them after yep. first appointment. Uh, but maybe they are not. And so this rapport is just going to make is going to allow you as the advisor to test where they are. 
I think that's a great way to sum it up. Like the whole point of this, like first couple minutes of that meeting is just to get them to put their arms back down. Yes. You know, because when they obviously left the first appointment, they're down, they're talking to you, they're opening up to you. Yes. They're going to come back in the second appointment and they're going to be again, crossed a little bit walled up and it's, it's getting those defenses back down. Right. Uh, at least the conversational sense. Right. And then refreshing them. Mm-hmm. Right. So you told them in the last appointment that you were going to have a benefit analysis ready for them. Mm-hmm. And you are going to, if you saw appointment or uh, step, step, step number three in the sales process, which was the actual creation of the benefit analysis, the track report, you've got this benefit analysis with them. Mm-hmm. Now, is this benefit analysis foolproof? No, it's not everything you need to know. It's, it's a quick report. That's what I like to call it. A quick report. It's got the particular information that pertains to their fed benefits. And it's going to allow you the landscape to start where in the first appointment you were talking about federal benefits in general. Mm -hmm. Now you're, you're, you're limiting it down to, to narrow the gaze into their particular situation in federal benefits. So you're not just talking to them only about TSP in general, all the funds of the TSP, you're talking about the TSP, the C fund in particular, and how that C fund will grow over the next five years until they're maybe, maybe they're retiring five years from now. And then showing that distribution of that asset over the next 20 years in their retirement, 20, 30 years, whatever it might be. Whatever fund they're in, you're diving into that particular fund, why they chose that fund, how that fund works, the goods, the bads, the uglies of it. You're getting into their meat. So you build the rapport and then now you're jumping into this benefit analysis. Mm -hmm. You know, Mr. Ms. Smith, I've got this great analysis. You know, we had talked about it. So this is going to give us, let me just talk to you a little bit about how this appointment is going to go. I love Mm -hmm. giving an interview. I've seen a lot of advisors kind of give it, not an interview, an overview Mm -hmm. of what the appointment's going to be, right? So they'll sit down and they'll say, here's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about this benefit analysis. I'm going to give you a little insight as to what I found in when, when, when I ran the report. And then maybe give you some guiding advice as far as how you might mitigate some of my concerns or, you know, maybe yeah. you're comfortable with them, blah, blah, blah. Right. So you give them the overview of what's going to happen. And then basically you're going to start diving into this report. So you've got this report, give a copy to each person or th- anybody else that's in the room and you have your copy and we're going to start working page by page. And you're going to address things like we were just talking about with the TSB. You're going to say stuff like, you know, the, the C fund, why were we invested in the C fund? Again, yeah. remind me about those types of things. You're doing a little more fact finding. I call it fact finding the deep cuts, right? So you're taking the deep cuts. You're going to go into their strategic thought process as to why they wanted to be invested in the C fund as to use the example we were already using, or maybe why they're in the G fund or. And who told them to do that? You know, do they have another advisor that told them that they should be in the G fund or C fund? Like this is where you're actually getting into the appointment with them and saying, you know, what are you doing? What's your specific situation? Right. And you asked them in the last appointment to bring specific documents. So mm-hmm. if you weren't able to get the social security information by now, maybe they've brought it with them at this point. Or if you're doing things virtually, maybe they've had the chance to to find out that information, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're doing this all virtually, then you in after appointment one would have had to send them an email or something like that to let them know how to get that social security information. Uh, rather than belly to belly experience where you may have told them or had a handout or something that showed them how to get those social security uh, payout numbers. But basically you're gathering the rest of these things and then you're going to start exposing issues, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's TSP we're talking about first in the track report, then fine. We're going to talk about TSP. We're going to talk about their particular investment in TSP, why Mm -hmm. they thought about that, and then ask probing questions as to why. So if they're invested in the C fund, they're pretty risky, right? For a person that's five years out from retirement, they're pretty heavily invested in the C fund. You know, what's the thought there? Mm -hmm. Do we have other assets that are helping us mitigate those those risks, Mm -hmm. right? And you might ask about those questions or about those other assets. Okay, these will help us get a more uh, specific track report Mm -hmm. or specific benefit analysis that'll show the distribution. But the idea is you're giving them this quick report that's gonna give their mind a taste of finally seeing their assets distributed over time. And I assure you, their current advisor or the lack thereof has never, or or their government, whatever, has not shown them a distribution strategy with their benefits included with their other assets. So it's easy for you as an advisor to make the case of saying, hey, look, you know, one of the cool things about being able to maximize is showing other assets. So we can add these things in right away. 
talk to me about, you know, your pension strategy, right? Mm -hmm. Like in the last meeting, you told me you wanted to take the 25% survivor annuity. Remind me again why that was. Yeah. Here are the particular issues. So you're addressing the specific benefit. They're specific. So, so the benefit itself, the specific situation of that client within the benefit mm -hmm. currently, and the issues with that decision. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to let them decide, uh, you know, come back with maybe, you know, a, a resolution, why they did something like that, why mm -hmm. they've made those decisions. And if you don't like the answer and you're going to make your suggestions, okay, well, great. Well, here's why other federal employees might not be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. Or, or might not go the same way or, or why, why they haven't done it or why we've looked at other strategies with those employees. Right. That's yeah. you you want that group think mentality where the federal employee is now, uh, you know, an outcast from their fellow federal employee mm -hmm. friends, you know, uh, other federal employees that we've sat down with, they had a very similar mindset, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason we chose to do something different, did you know you could do X, Y, or Z? They've gone this route to do X, Y, and Z, right? Let's take the pension, for example, right? We were talking before we went on air here. Mm -hmm. the pension example, okay, they're going to take the 50%, the max survivor benefit of the pension, their, their FERS annuity. Mm -hmm. And they've got this Fagley, you know, and you're like, well, why, why, why again, remind me again, why you've got a, a, a maxed out Fegley plan and you're planning to take the 50% survivor, because here's what other mm -hmm. uh, federal employees I've guided them to doing because you've got this great benef spousal benefit that's going to pay out to this, your, your, your loved one, when you pass away, mm -hmm. you've got additional coverage with this Fegley. What was the thought there? Oh, I want to really take care of my wife. I want to really take care of my spouse, whatever mm -hmm. it might be. But you're not realizing that this Fegley is going to blow up on you, mm -hmm. right? Or, or, or maybe they're not taking a spousal option and they want to just, they're going to solely rely on Fegley. Well, there's a Fegley sale yeah. right there, right? Now they've got no spousal option with their pension. They've got this Fegley life insurance that's going to explode on them. You could make an opportunity, or you could, you could pitch to them the opportunity to potentially look at supplemental life insurance options out mm -hmm. there that are cheaper, per, more permanent, and are going to stay and pay out tax-free benefit to them rather than getting this, you know, spousal benefit with the pension or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be fully taxable and maybe lesser benefit and certainly less control. You're not going to get it all in a heap or anything like that. You're going to get it distributed over time. Yeah. Right. So there's, there's a lot of benefits by just examining their, their thought process. Cause I assure you, they're not thinking it through as far as, as you would as a financial planner. Or do they know any of it, you know, or nor nearly right. as much as I need to with it. And that's where you're going to get from the beginning of this, where they walked in with a simple report. They walked in with just a couple pieces of their information and you're walking them through all these pieces, the TSP, the Fegley, uh, their first pension, any other outside assets. And that's, what's guiding you to say, Hey, look, I've got a little piece here, but there's a lot more to this puzzle. Here's all these questions. And that's, what's going to get you to the point of getting them in for really another fact finders, because there's so much you're going to cover through these steps. Well, you're doing that deep cut mm -hmm. fact find as you're going through mm -hmm. the, the, the quick report, right? Yep. So you do this benefit analysis and you're going to do deeper fact finding as you're going through getting the information you asked them to come back. Yeah. Right. So in the first appointment, you build some rapport, you build some credibility, knowledge, and now they're willing to bring the reports with them to the mm -hmm. next appointment or show up with them online to the next appointment, whatever it is. And now you're going to show them this quick benefit analysis and talk to them about you know, uh, the issues that you're seeing at a, at a very elementary level, mm -hmm. right? And that they might be justified in the decisions they're making, but I need to know more information like yep. any doctor would, yep. right? And you're going to get the, that deeper information and you're going to say, here are some of the issues, right? You say you've got these assets and these things. You've got this, uh, uh, this, this other 401k, past mm -hmm. employer 401k. Your husband has a pension. You've got these other things. Here are the leftover issues, or here are some of the ways that you could potentially maximize better mm -hmm. in retirement, whether that be Social Security, uh, deferring Social Security, mm -hmm. or a Roth conversion strategy if they have a lot of assets and you know taxes are on sale right now, talking about taxes, uh, talking about uh, maybe a, a better distribution distribution strategy with TSP, very limited with the distribution options mm -hmm. within TSP, moving those funds. And you're, you're generally, without being specific, explaining to them like a one-on-one lesson 
in financial planning. That's mm. what I've seen the best advisors do is mm. like they come in, they build rapport in the second appointment. They go through this quick benefit analysis with the client. They then talk about the issues as they're going through the benefit analysis and mm. see if the client has any sort of anecdotes and anything that's left over. Those are the pain points, right? Yep. And then they're going to say, let me teach you something about financial planning. This is what we've done with many other federal employees across the board is we've talked to them about this or, you know, here's how you guarantee income. We take a portion of, of this kind of money and guarantee income. There are products out there that do that. There's, there's ways that we can strategically uh, accumulate safely over the next few years so that we don't have to lose it. Some people will use like a risk alive software mm -hmm. and get a speed limit sign. And, and that's really unique because it asks the questions to the client and the client makes a decision and then shows them their speed limit and then where they're actually at right now. Right. Yeah. So that's really unique. And then finally, the last step of the second appointment and really where you should start with it from the beginning in, in your mind is, would you like me to do this? What I've done for so many other federal employees and put a plan together, knowing what I know now, I have a very firm belief that I can help you with your specific financial issues going into retirement and help you maximize these strategies. Would you like me to put something together for you so that we can come back next week and you guys can design a plan that like from the guidelines that I have, design a plan that looks exactly the way you want your retirement to look, mm -hmm. right? And if they say yes, depending on where they say with that, your next appointment with them is just frankly- Delivering. Delivering the appointment. Yeah. And we'll talk about appointment three because it's really cool, but, but, uh, but the best of the best in appointment two, it's simple. We're gonna mm -hmm. we're gonna build rapport. We're gonna go over this quick benefit analysis. I'm gonna do. Some, I'm gonna identify issues that I see, and I'm gonna do deeper fact finding as to why they made this decision or why they want to make this decision or that decision. I'm not gonna do that in the first appointment. People mm -hmm. want to do that in the first appointment, and it's pushing the issue. Yeah. Educate for free in the first appointment. In the second appointment, if they come back to you in the second appointment. Now's your time fact find, to do find deeper your fact finding yep. and find the real issues. And mm -hmm. then do a brief teaching, a brief teaching, a quick teaching of financial 101. I call it financial mm -hmm. planning 101. You're going to do that financial planning 101 on the leftover pains that you, as a financial advisor is going to be glaring to you where their mistakes or their errors in logic are. And then you're basically just going to say, let me teach you a little something about financial planning. Mm -hmm. And as somebody that's helped so many federal employees in the past and is partnered with one of the largest federal education resources in the country, and as a federal retirement consultant, I can put together a report for you that'll help design exactly the retirement you're looking for. If you'd like me to do that, you just gotta tell me yes. And that's it, ask for the business, let them know that you can do this, and, and basically whatever answer they give you, yes or no, you wanna think about it, whatever, like that's, that'll give you the judge of whether you're gonna close because in the third appointment, at that point, it's it's essentially like paperwork, yeah. right? You're going to run them through your plan and we'll, we'll save the rest of it. But but basically, uh, the third appointment's like you're at the 85th percentile of closed percentage. Like mm -hmm. you're going to close these people at this point. Yep. Like you have to pretty much mess it up. Yeah, just don't shoot yourself in the foot and you got it. Exactly. Yeah. Hopefully. So that's appointment two. Rick, anything else you want to add to that? You were good, man. We covered it. All right. Good quality there. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us on uh, the here now fourth episode of the sales process. Stick with us for this last episode here, and we're going to show you how to close more business in the Fed market. Thanks again. We'll see you next time right here on Coffee for Closers. I'm Alex Wellings. That's Rick Rick Hallmeyer. See you next time.